It's 7.30. Welcome to the Resources and Services Overview and Scrutiny Committee, Tuesday the 15th of November. Um, I'm Councillor Gary Scott, Chairman of the Committee tonight. Apologies for absence and substitutions, please. We have received apologies from Councillor Barry, Councillor Morrison and Councillor Stevenson. Uh, Councillor Baker is sitting in substitute for Councillor Stevenson. And no substitutes for Councillor Barry and no, Councillor no. Morrison. Thank you. Before we start the meeting and the minutes, uh, I'd like to welcome Councillor Paul Clifton, um, who may be speaking about some items later. And obviously, a warm welcome to uh, my colleague, Councillor Anne Wiggins. Item number two, minutes of the meeting last on the 17th of October. Pages one to six. Do we have a uh, a record? Move you move, Councillor Griffiths. Second Councillor Skills. All in favour of the minutes? That's been approved. Thank you. Item three, declarations of interest. Councillors. No. I should say welcome uh, uh, Mr. Simmons, who's got a nasty cold, uh, so he's uh, live streaming from us afar. So, if you want to say anything, um, Mr. Simmons. Uh, no, Chairman. I wish you all the best, and I only wish I could be there. But um, you probably don't want my germs. You're so right, Mr. Simmons. We don't know, want no uh, germs here. Thank you. <laughs> Item number four, questions on notice pursuant to council procedure rule 38, if any. Yeah, uh, we've received no questions for this meeting, Chairman. Thank you. Item number five, report of head of democratic services and elections A1, working programming, including monitoring of previous recommendations and summary of forthcoming decisions, pages 7 to 34. I assume Mr Simmons would go with you first. Uh, you can, Chairman. Yeah, I think uh, most of the detail is uh, set out in the appendices. Uh, so starting on page nine, I think particularly uh, at this meeting, it's opportune for the uh, chairman of the various task and finish groups or those um, other uh, individuals that are leading on the individual inquiries. You may want to to comment as you go through them. Um, so I think you know the first one there on page nine is the beach hut strategy. So um, it might be something you want to just uh, update the committee in relation to uh, how that inquiry is progressing. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Yes, um, as people may not know, uh, for members of the public who are watching in, um, I'm chairman also of the beach hut and task and finish group. The task and finish groups were set up by the uh, Resources and Services Committee. To look to look up um, different topics uh, that we are doing at Tendron District Council, beach charts, planning, cyber security, council procurement, customer service, um, other things we'll be looking at in in the not too distant future will be waste recycling, litter beyond, and um, and I think that may be it um, for next year. But for the beach huts, um, myself and other councillors, including Councillor Codlin, who sits here today, uh, we have been having meetings to discuss beach huts in across the district to uh, to look at the new draft strategy that's coming forward at Tenon District Council. We've done a site visit where we walked from Frinton to Walton, looked at beach huts. We've also uh, had uh, meetings with Mike Caron, Kieran Charles, uh, officers at TDC, and with uh, Councillor Porter, uh, the uh, Councillor Cabinet Member for Leisure Services. And we've also had representations from Brighton Sea, Walton and Frinton Beach Hut Associations to give their views and opinions on uh, the beach huts across the district. Um, at the moment, it's going very, very well. There has been a consultation exercise. There'll be a, a draft strategy coming in for next year. 
uh, where I suspect there will be another uh, consultation exercise where Councillor Porter then will then decide um, on the outcome of the strategy. Um, then it may, if I'm correct, Count Mr Simmons or Miss Durham, that it may get voted on at the full council on the recommendations afterwards. Is that correct? Uh, it's a matter for Cabinet and therefore will be decided at, at Cabinet, but um, obviously that will be open session um, ultimately for, for them to determine. So that gives you some idea what the task and finish groups are, are doing um, at the moment. So that was my one from Beach Huts um, across the district. Does any councillors want to ask questions of me about that at the moment? Thank you. Right. Next one on the list is uh, plan and enforcement. Um, I don't think there's anything uh, that's come back on the lists, but I will go um, through the list um, what Mr Durham and Mr Simmons have done. So we haven't got anything on the uh, plan and enforcement and Chairman. So yes. Chairman, just uh, obviously you've got the chairman of the task and finish group for planning enforcement uh, there in the form of Councillor Baker, who's substituting for Councillor Stevenson this evening. So he might want to um, just uh, give a, an update on that task and finish yeah. group. Thank you, thank, thank you for prompting me. I was reading this very handy sheet that Mr Durham put together and yourself, and I totally forgot. Um, so Councillor Baker, if you want to give a, a, a short um, few paragraphs of what you've been doing and and uh, we may ask you questions. Thank you chairman um, I'm easily forgotten. Um, Never forgotten chairman. As, <laughs> as you're aware you you um, this committee set down um, the terms of reference for the task and finish group for planning enforcement um, and I'll just briefly run through those which were the review of current powers policies procedures data on the use of current enforcement powers the effectiveness of approach and assessment of how cases should be prioritised and with those to be invited to attend any of our meetings being shown as the portfolio holder for planning, chairman of the planning committee, director of planning, assistant director of planning. Um, and we have only met twice so far, um, once in person on the 26th of October, um, sorry, on the 3rd of October, then via Teams, um, which wasn't that successful. It, on, in my part, because my internet connection kept dropping out, so we, we got there in the end, um, and we we have another Teams meeting this coming Thursday, um, which hopefully everybody will be able to be there. Um, so from this, from um, your terms of reference or committee, um, I, as the chairman of that task and finish group, identified six strands that we were going to concentrate on. Uh, those being powers policy procedures and effectiveness of approach, data categorization, reporting and monitoring, um, communication, prioritization and assessment, members expectations, and for us to invite portfolio holder for planning, John Pateman G, one of the planning uh, team leaders, um, although I may have not, he, he may not be a planning team leader, he might be higher than that, I'm not sure of his actual title. Uh, an officer that actually deals with developers, uh, Mr. Smith, um, one of the um, enforcement team itself, um, uh, uh, Mr. Matt Deal, who's just started with us last week, uh, who's now the planning enforcement team leader, um, the planning committee solicitor, uh, Joanne Fisher, and the deputy CEO and monitor officer, Lisa Hastings. Um, so far, um, we have not spoken to any of those, but other officers um, so far. So. There are other, might be other officers that we wish to speak to or have, have chat to us. Um, we have had a presentation um, from um, one of the technicians about the procedures and, and how it all how it all starts, basically. Um, and from that, there are a number of subtopics that have come forward. Lots of questions being asked. Um, I have had a couple of meetings with the director of planning just to see that we're going in the right direction. Um, and I've also spoken um, prior to any of this happening, I had a chat with portfolio holder for planning, Jeff Bray. Um, obviously the final report will be coming, well, I say will, we're hopeful that um, the final report with any recommendations of which there may be a number um, 
will be on the agenda of this committee's meeting scheduled for Tuesday the 21st of February 2023. That's a very brief um, outline of so far what we've done. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because obviously things might completely change. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Do any councillors want to ask Councillor Baker um, any other questions with reference to plan and enforcement? Councillor Baker, thank you very much. Can I ask that um, on, on enforcement, um, do you know if um, um, in the coming weeks you'll be able to do, or will the officers be able to do an all members briefing for councillors to look at, uh, have an update on you know, like plan and enforcement? I know we've had one, um, perhaps um, um, after the, your, what your task and finish group comes about, perhaps uh, an all members briefing discuss enforcement because I know myself and other councillors we, we deal with a lot of enforcement cases across our areas and I was wondering um, would, would an all members briefing be useful? Um, obviously you had John um, John Pateman G update us on what had been going on since he was in post and tidying up all the bits and pieces um, uh, all the out the cases that had been gone on before we are actually asking for an update on where we are with everything um, obviously a lot of that is not in the public domain um, but that will be updated to us hopefully on Thursday um, it will be part of the final report I am sure but I'm not sure that we will as I say we uh, I'm not sure that there are enough all member briefing days to fit another one in, but the, the final report will come to this committee and then there are certain recommendations in the back of my head around all member briefings and training. Um, but like I say, I, I don't want to commit us to putting something okay. forward that we may not. I may, I'll you. come back with another question shortly, but uh, Mr Simmons is um, is highlighted in yellow. Uh, we'd like to, uh, I mean, Mr Simmons. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's probably useful to uh, to reference the fact that there is a programmed meeting of TDALC um, in May next year, and there will be a presentation there. So um, I think the the uh, ability of the council to um, convey those messages around uh, enforcement is going wider than just district councillors, um, and with the with the clear intention that we, we can get that message out there. Um, also, planning enforcement will form part of the induction training that councillors of this council will be receiving uh, post the elections in May. So um, hopefully that will address the uh, your concern that um, we are kept up to date or councillors are kept up to date uh, with um, developments in relation to planning enforcement. Thank you, Mr Simmons. Just one more for me. Um, I know enforcement is is, is quite a, a broad area of planning, but um, the, the thing that myself and, and Councillor Wiggins, I'm sure, received comments from is new housing estates that being you know, like for, for, uh, 140 to 300 houses, you know, big areas. I was wondering whether the enforcement department could possibly concentrate on new housing developments. I mean, large housing developments. I was wondering if the task and finish group could possibly look at that in the future, maybe. It is a line of inquiry that we have and will follow up. Um, but it, it, it's it's one of the substrands, if you like, with regard to ongoing monitoring and things like that. Thank you. I, I really, really welcome that because I think it's really, really key, especially with big developments in council. I'm also shaking his, his nodding his head. Uh, definitely uh, that, that we we have very large um, housing developments that have been going up. And um, and us councillors are receiving comments and residents have moved into these new towns in the states. Why are things not getting done with with from developers? So I think it's really really key to uh, to pursue that further. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Uh, next item on the list is um, cyber security. Um, I don't think we've got anyone here. Are you are you cyber security, Councillor? Oh. Thank you very much. I did know what your uh, your head chair was, for, but definitely, yeah, Councillor Clifton, over to you. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. So, yes, um, I was very uh, proud and privileged to be nominated as Chairman for the uh, 
District Council Cyber Security uh, Task and Finishing Group. Um, it's a very, very uh, serious subject. Um, and as you can imagine, there are some sensitive issues around this because we don't want the wrong people finding out the wrong information. So if there are any questions this evening, please don't feel offended if my answer to that is I'm not prepared to answer that this evening um, or it is a vague answer because I don't want to give too much away. Um, when I was made, uh, when I found out I was going to be chairman of the task and finishing group, I found it uh, strangely uh, interesting that the following day, Rockstar Games, who are a massive uh, internet games publisher, famous for publishing the Grand Theft Auto series of games, um, announced that they themselves had been hacked, proving that it does not matter how small a fry or big a fish you are, everyone is vulnerable in, in the cyber security game, and that is why it's so important to be completely hot on topic and making sure you are doing everything you can possible. With that in mind, um, uh, I took it upon myself before the uh, group first met to talk to officers to raise my own knowledge of the subject matter to make sure that we were going in a constructive direction. From that and uh, conversations we had, um, we talked about a document known as the Cybersecurity Assessment Framework, which has recently been given out by uh, the National Cyber Security Council, which is part, which is the cyber security arm of GCHQ. Um, and this document basically is a what you should be doing guide to keeping yourself as secure as possible. With the time scale we have before preparing a report for late for early next year, um, when I presented this to the group, it was a decision that we would focus on more critical areas in the time frame allowed because the issue of cyber security is absolutely huge you could spend days weeks months talking about it and we made the very intelligent decision to just focus on very key areas at this time with uh the notion that following elections the next council can form another cyber security task and finishing group to continue the work to scrutinize our offices to make sure they're doing the jobs they should be doing um, the cyber security uh, assessment framework um, focuses on four main key areas, uh, managing security risk, protecting against cyber attack, uh, detecting cyber security events and minimizing the impact of cyber security incidents. So far, the task and finishing group have had two meetings. One was uh, planning out how we will be moving forward and what we will be discussing. Uh, our second meeting, both these meetings have been successful on teams. Our second meeting dis uh, discussed the first two areas, managing uh, security risk and protecting against cyber security attack. Um, our comments from discussing that will be put into report to this committee uh, Tuesday in the 21st in February. Was that, I heard that right. Um, with our recommendations coming from that. Um, I said that a lot. The, uh, the, the Officers are incredibly uh, happy with our progress. I'm incredibly happy with our progress. All council members have been very, very constructive and very positive in their comments and moving the project forward. A lot of this we are unanimous in our comments and our recommendations. We have from time explored different angles to try and find other ways of doing this. They've not very, proved very successful. So moving forward, we are come, making a lot of good ground. We're making a lot of progress and hopefully um, when the report comes to you, uh, this, uh, this scrutiny committee um, moving forward, the recommendations we make will be adopted, put onto full council and ready to go for next year. I think that's all I've got to say on the matter. Thank you, uh, Councillor Clifton. Um, does any councillors want to ask Councillor Clifton about anything about cyber security? No? I just say thank you very much and you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Um, any um, uh, questions from councillors um, in the coming weeks? I'm sure councillors can email you uh, or any task and finish group chair um, with questions with relevant to the area you're covering. So I'm sure you may get questions further down the line on that. Um, thank you. And I'm more than happy to receive them. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Clifton. Next item we'll quickly briefly talk about is a council procurement. Um, I have a little bit of um, information that I'm going to share and read out. Again, thank you for the officers for putting this together. 
council procurement contract. This inquiry is, as it states in the report, being undertaken through informal meetings involving the whole committee membership. The first meeting was held on 17th of October, and the next meeting is now scheduled for the 7th of December. Members of the committee have been asked for their views on issues covered at the meeting on the 17th of October. There was a lot of written material for councillors to read through and also, and so it was understood that some of, the, of that reading would take place on the 17th of October. As such, it would be good if committee members could be encouraged again to submit comments, etc., in, in response to the email request from officers on this matter. The issue of inflation in, in contract pricing is also something the committee has already identified. Will uh, will be something will be. I can't say that word. Uh, specifically uh, look at the uh, part of the committee's budget scrutiny work that it will take place on the 11th of January at the four day process. So that's council contract procurement. Does any councillors want to ask a question about that? And then if not, if you do, please send an email to the relevant chairman of that committee. Next uh, item is customer service. Um, I do have uh, Councillor Wiggins in, in the uh, room. If Councillor Wiggins wishes to say anything about customer service. Uh, you know, I'm just giving you the option because you are one of the members on the committee and you can give the option to say anything. If not, I've got something to read about it. You hold on, Councillor. Mr. Darren's going to get you a mic if you want a mic. Hey, on, Councillor Wiggins. Thank you. Um, I was going to say I went um, along with Councillor Stevenson and Councillor Placey and myself, and Mr. Darren came on his day off. Um, and we went to Pier Avenue and we saw um, all the people that were in the day when they were taking calls and things. Um, it was, well, they're taking calls the whole time. It was, it was fascinating. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they're I, to my mind, they're overworked. But um, it was, it was the way that it was done. We, when, when you ring in, you don't know where it's going to. And it was just interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wiggins. Um, the information I have uh, on the uh, again with the officers have put forward to me. The uh, customer service task and finish group. The task group is chaired by Councillor Mark Stevenson and also comprised of Councillor Morrison, Terry Allen, Councillor Gina Placey, and of course uh, Councillor Wiggins. They have met four times so far, and they've heard evidence across the council about customer service. And they have also undertaken some mystery shopper exercises to identify them for themselves and experience of members of the public. So, uh, councillors, um, does anyone want to ask questions myself or Councillor Wiggins? Thank you, Councillor Wiggins. Next item um, is again carbon neutral. Um, obviously, Councillor Barry is. Him and his apologies, but um, as um, from the sheet prepared by officers, carbon neutral by 2030, the off agenda briefing paper based on questions provided by committee designated carbon neutral champion, Councillor Barry, has been requested and it is anticipated that this will be provided by the end of this month. Once received, it will be circulated to the whole committee. The briefing paper will look at how the climate action plan implementation is progressing how we are measuring up, measuring carbon reductions, what measures have actually been implemented and what impact they have had, and our plans in the next two to three years and what anticipated savings, and what is planned for 2025 to 2030 to continue the commitment to achieve neutrality, and what are the obstacles and problems. So they're the kind of things um, um, that, that that committee or, or Councillor Barry will be looking at in the not too distant future. Next one um, is waste and contract. 
appendix. Oh, sorry. Does anyone want to mention anything else? Um, obviously, the completed items on uh, page 13 is the decision of the uh, portfolio holder for environmental space and, uh, about Frinton and the Greens Ward. Um, that was uh, discussed in length at the previous meeting of the Resources and Services Committee. And then on A1 Appendix B, again, the monitoring report of the Frinton um, Theatre. And then on page 18, waste and recycling and littering and recommendations there. There is information again on the on the crib sheet. Reply from the portfolio holder for environmental and recommendations from the committee on the 30th of July on waste recycling littering. A set out and recommendations 10 on page 22. The council approved on July 12, 22, that the development of proposals for the waste recycling street cleaning contract verification from 2026 be included in the work program of inquiries of the committee for 2022-23. The recommendations and the reply can carefully be added to that inquiry, which can be timed to, have, to take place in 2023. This inquiry will seek to draw attention to a series of matters to support su subsequent contribution on waste recycling littering collection contracts. Right, Councillor Baker. Obviously, I won't be on the committee when you look at the um, upcoming contract changes and everything else in 2020 six i believe it is but i understand there's a new um, environmental act that is going to come into force in 2023 that may have um not repercussions that's the wrong word but may have um it may impact on on the delivery that we may have to look at prior to the renewal of, a, of the contract so i just think that um maybe that that, that needs to to be imparted to all councillors as to what the change is going to be from government if they do do the changes. Um, but uh, just that comment, Chairman, thank you. Yes, Councillor Baker. Um, does any other councillor want to ask a question about that? I do, I do know, Chairman, um, Councillor Baker, that um, the government, you're right, the government is going to bring in some new changes. Um, the council obviously would have to look at those in the future. We may have to adapt and change, but that all depends on the new administration after local elections next year. Um, there could be a, a complete sea change, so uh, those councillors um, uh, may be here or future elected ones will have to look at that in, in the future. Uh, Mr Simmons wishes to indicate to come in. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I was just um, uh, just wanted to, to obviously be uh, clear that um, there is work going on uh, through officers and involving the portfolio holder on the changes that the government have announced to effectively uh, harmonise recycling arrangements uh, across the country. Um, so those discussions are happening at waste collection authority level, uh, so district councils in Essex and with the waste disposal authority, the Essex County Council uh, to to look at those those issues. Um, there's no uh, specific measures that will be implemented until uh, you know, there is that absolute clarity as to what the government's uh, intentions are in relation to timescales and dare I say new burdens funding uh, for the additional costs uh, that will fall on particular local authorities um, having to move to a, a new recycling uh, arrangement because of the government's uh, change in legislation. So there is work going on. Um, Councillor Baker's right to, to, to flag it up. It has been flagged up um, at previous meetings of this committee and um, as and when further details come out that we can rely on, uh, then they obviously will be imparted to councillors more widely. Are you OK there, Councillor Baker? Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask uh, Mr Simmons, um, I know on uh, page 20 and uh, previous pages they've got the got the um, 
the responses from our committee, uh, our response, and then the cabinet recommendations um, on the middle section. But um, I assume then there were no responses on the other items about uh, miscollection, collection, recycling boxes, um, litter bins, along Ardley Crown to Horsley Cross and A120 along. Um, is there any reason for that? Chairman, you may be able to get to that page faster than I can, but um, uh, within Appendix B, the report that was submitted to, or the note that was submitted to um, Cabinet is set out. Uh, and I think there are responses uh, starting on page 25 to each and every one of the individual recommendations. So um, I haven't immediately got the, the uh, is it the litter picking on A120 is uh, item nine on page 30 and the response uh, is set out on that page from the portfolio holder. I hope that assists if uh, that wasn't clear from the earlier part of the appendix. Yeah, it does uh, uh, assist and thank you Mr Durham to uh, indicate it uh, to, to, to my left here. So uh, thank God uh, an officer's next to me. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so any councillors want to ask the questions or anything about that? OK. Does anyone have anything else uh, want to talk about those items in Appendix A overall? Nothing, councillors? Chairman, just on Appendix B, um, I think uh that it might be useful um if uh there was just that formal decision to reference both the re initial recommendations and the response from the portfolio holder to form part of the inquiry that this committee will undertake in spring 2023 um that is indicated in appendix a so uh there is a proposal that the committee will look at waste and recycling in preparation for 2026. And um, those recommendations and the response from the portfolio holder, I think, will assist the committee when it undertakes that uh, review. We're just uh, looking on page eight here, um, the committee, um, there's two recommendations there. I assume that those two um, will have to be voted upon uh, items A and B on page eight. Mr Simmons. Yes, Chairman, I'm sure you're um, correct. Um, they, they are, I think, what you've been talking about. So in general terms, it does say that the uh, submissions that you've received from chairman and others of the individual task and finish groups is effectively recorded. And I think um, it's been valuable to receive that feedback um, and amendments to the uh, work programme. The only amendment that I would think is uh, something that you might want to consider is, um, as I say, on page, um, I think it's 12, you've got the reference to the waste recycling and litter beyond 2026 work. And what I'm suggesting to you is that you just formally record that the recommendations from your July meeting and the response from the portfolio holder that set out uh, within Appendix B forms part of that review. Sorry if that's not clear, but um, hopefully that, that will be. You can see what I'm trying to suggest. Right, so councillors, what do you think of that? What Mr Simmons has said? All agree with that? Oh, good. Um, I need a mover and seconder. Councillor Skills has moved it and Councillor Amos has seconded it. All in favour? 
Thank you. Um, finally, on page 33, can I just ask, does anyone um, want to say anything before we, I know we've moved it and stuff, but there's nothing else to be brought up on that previous item, no? Item uh, Appendix C on A1, Resources and Services Overview and Scrutiny, 15th November, Overview and Scrutiny Procedure Rule 13, Scrutiny of Proposed Decisions. Below the forthcoming uh, decisions are those published since the 7th of October 2022, the publication date of for the committee's last ordinary meeting. In presentating the following, the committee's attention is drawn to agenda item notes in respect of the Overview and Scrutiny Procedure 13. Proposed new TDC road closure policy um, under decision maker leisure and tourism portfolio holder. Decision date 16th of the 12th, 2022. Um, now, I, I, I uh, was discussing this at our uh, meeting the other day. Um, Councillor Griffiths, who, who is also uh, um, in agreement with myself um, about um, having a policy that may be kind of connected to a previous policy that we that was agreed at the last meeting with reference to open space. And I was wondering, Councillor Griffiths. So it's my view that if you're going to have an open space. Could you put your mic closer to sorry. It's my view that if you're going to have a, a road closure policy, it needs to be linked in with the open space policy because there are some events, for example, car rallies and air shows where the two run together. So it, so it would, in my view, would make sense to have both policies coming together mm. and both policies dovetailing, rather than have them both in isolation and then having to come back and try and amend it later. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. And uh, I, have, I, have this, I have similar sympathies of, uh, of that. Um, does any councillor want to say anything? Councillor Amos, do you want to say? Yeah, I, I agree with Councillor Griffiths. Councillor Baker, Councillor Skills, or Councillor Codlin, yeah, don't know. Um, well, I mean, um, the requirement to have proposed new TDC road closure policy, I think, is sensible. Um, I think it should work uh, together in tandem with the new open space policy that was um, discussed at the last meeting. Um, Councillor Griffiths, if you want, do you wish to move that? Yes, I wish to move that. Maybe we could have them both um, together at a future meeting when before the policies are implemented. Is there a seconder? Are oh, you seconding, Councillor Baker, or you want to speak? Can I just say something before I second? Um, yeah. I, I'm presuming that the policy will go towards, I mean, maybe officers can help, the, the, the policy will go to, to Cabinet on the 16th of December. Will it then be going out for consultation? from Cabinet, or has that already been done? Mr Simmons? Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, I don't have the, the details as to uh, whether this is a finalised uh, policy or a draft, um, but I think the, the point has been made and, and it seems to have consent of the committee that Cabinet be advised that there should be um, uh, uh, a duality and approach to the development of that policy in conjunction with the one on open space. The one on open space um, is, as far as I'm aware, not on the forthcoming programme of decisions. And so um, what we can do is just alert Cabinet to your view as a committee. Um, and the response to that will come back to the next meeting of this committee. It may be then that you want to pick up the point made by Councillor Griffiths about whether you want to specifically scrutinise those policies uh, once you've heard back from Cabinet on that. As I say, at the moment, I'm not aware that um, the open plan, open space uh, policy that has been referenced to you is yet programmed for any formal decision. So. Um, uh, you might want to hear back, as I say, from Cabinet as to the timing of that and therefore when you might want to add that to your work programme. Councillor Griffiths, Councillor Baker. Bearing in mind that we have events going on all over the district, 
and quite a few of them involve road closures and open spaces. One would have thought that from a tourism promotion point of view, that having your policies dovetailing would make sense. I mean, you've only got to look at some of the issues that arose, for example, with a, for instance, the ETA, we've had ongoing issues with the valleys happening in areas like um, Holland on Sea, um, air shows in Clacton that are reasonably good, but there's some road closures with that. So one would have thought that it would make sense for this council to have a working policy and that it shouldn't be too difficult to write an open space policy, um, delay the um, road closure policy and then get them both to come back to the committee together. We're not looking at rocket science, they're always a relatively easy thing to write, I would have thought. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Councillor Clifton, uh, um, oh, this is just for the councillors of the committee, but as a generous chairman like I am, I will, I will um, let you um, make a comment, Councillor Clifton. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I wasn't aware this was being discussed and I, I probably should have declared an interest at the start of the meeting as uh, chairman of the Wharton on A's Carnival. Um, on an annual basis, we go through a, a phase of organising a uh, a weekend event on open spaces as well as a road closure or as we have it as a rolling roadblock. Um, my only comments would be that not to look at just uh, road closures but to include rolling roadblocks with that um, but also it would make sense to include the open spaces policy at the same time because when we uh, go to the safety advisory group meetings and we have representatives from Essex County Council when it comes to road safety and stuff when we have an event there they are off even if the the event does not include a road closure. They are offering talking to us about stuff regards to road safety, i.e. if you're having this event there, what are you doing about people crossing roads here? What are you doing about parking there? This, that, and the other. So it, my, my only comments would be it would make sense and to include not just road closures, but rolling roadblocks as well. Thank you, Councillor Clifton. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I think this must be a draft policy because I would hope um, if this is going to be a published decision or a description of a decision, proposed policy, that if if we as a council haven't consulted with the the authorities that we have the power to shut the road, um, people that decide they don't want to abide by the road closure, and there are some, unfortunately, they will be dealt with by police. So I'm hoping that they have been consulted before this comes and if not i'm presuming that this is going to be a draft to go out to consultation and i think it would have been useful to have known for this committee to have known whether it was a draft or it's the final um because you can't comment on on something that you haven't seen it's very difficult um as a ward councillor i haven't seen what this proposed policy is likely to be so if this is the final one, when do I make my comments? After Cabinet have made the decision? Or should it not be beforehand? Um, you know, I, I like Councillor Griffith says, I, I have issues down my end um, with regard to should there be road closure and, and other bits and pieces. So I would like to know if it's a draft. Yes, Councillor Baker, um, I have similar concerns that we have road clear closures and such like in the rural areas. Um, Two, um, Mr. Simmons, um, do you know offhand if this is um, the, the the policy has already been written and the decision to implement this on the 16th or 12th or what? Uh, Chairman, I I, I think uh, I'd indicated that uh, earlier. I'm not aware of whether there's been prior consultation with uh, relevant individuals uh, and stakeholders um, prior to that. Uh, the Just looking at the decision on the, the website, it does say to seek, sorry, uh, to seek adoption of a TDC policy in respect of temporary road closure applications made under section 21 of the town, of the police town clauses act 1847. Um, so uh, from, reading that and with nothing else that's the sole information uh, that is put out in relation to that decision but that would sound like um, there is an intention to submit um, a policy for adoption and one presumes based on 
the comments that Councillor Baker has, has said that that prior consultation has, has already occurred. Uh, but I think the points being made by the committee about clarity around that, about the need for consultation and the uh, clear benefits of uh, aligning this policy with the open, the proposed open spaces policy, I think are ones, if the committee just wants to formally state this, that we can put forward to Cabinet and make sure that Cabinet is aware of it before making any decisions on this matter and on the open spaces policy. Thank you, Mr Simmons. Councillor Baker, Councillor Griffiths, what do you think? Or any councillor for that matter? I think it's a move in the right direction. So if we do that, at least it gives them the an indication that we're not happy with the current state. Right. I concur. So for the record, uh, um, what do you think the recommendation would be for this? Do you have any word in Councillor Griffiths or Councillor Baker? Chairman, I think I think we have the sentiment there from the committee, and I think it was moved by Councillor Griffiths and seconded by Councillor Baker uh, that representations be made to Cabinet um, that this policy um, uh, should be aligned with the open spaces, the proposed open spaces policy that uh, has previously been referenced to this committee, uh, and that uh, it is vitally important that consultation is undertaken. Um, prior to any adopted policy um, uh, in this regard, so I think you know those that that's what I've taken from from the discussion by the committee. I agree with that, and um, so we go to the vote on that. Um, it's been moved by Councillor Griffiths and seconded by Councillor Baker uh, to, uh, to as what um, Mr. Simmons has just said and what we've been saying about this about uh, TDC road closure policy. Um, please indicate if you're in favour. Thank you. That's been moved and successfully voted upon. Um, I don't have any items left on the agenda. Can I just say thank you for Councillor Clifton and Councillor Wiggins for attending um, tonight's meeting as guests. And thank you, uh, Mr Simmons. I hope you uh, feel well. Um, um, so thank you for uh, screening in uh, remotely and councillors, thank you for tonight and uh, we close.